Okay, Bob. Follow me. Larry, I, I can't see you. How, how am I supposed to follow you? Just move this way. Okay. You ready for this? Y you got me really curious, Larry. What are you up to? You'll see. <gasps> well... It's a curtain. Bob, it's not just any curtain. It's an extreme redo crying edition curtain. So? While you were on vacation last week, the crew from Extreme Redo Crying Edition came in and redid the kitchen. We've had a total kitchen makeover. How you feeling right now, man? I feel good. Uh, you hear that? He feels good. Aww. <laughs> well, my friend, get ready to feel great. Pull that curtain! Ooh! You guys are amazing. Light blue walls, a throw pillow, the place has been completely transformed. It, uh, looks the same to me. Oh yeah, go ahead, let it all out. What? Where's Quirty? Hi, Quirty. Greetings, Larry. Ah, Quirty? Is that you? Oh yeah, extreme redo. Quirty's needed an upgrade for ten years. Looking good, buddy. I feel like a million bits. Ha ha, get it? Bits. <laughs> good one. Hey, yeah, we've upgraded his humor chip. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I've got mail. You've never had mail before, buddy. And now you do. How's that feel? I feel like a million bits. Aww, that, that is so sweet. <laughs> Dear Bob and Mary, my mom and dad are always telling me stuff I don't want to do. Like making my bed, doing my homework, practicing piano, that kind of stuff. All I want to do is play. What should I do? Your friend, Liam Young. Wow, that's pretty cool. We are hip, happening, and now, thanks to Extreme Redo. I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. You can just cry if you want. You want to cry? <laughs> yeah, come on, let it go. So Low long. tomato flow. Children, Children. Here you go, Liam. Roll film. Wasn't that a great story, Bob? It sure was. Uh, uh, Larry, what's everybody doing here? Oh, well, I invited the cast to come check out the new kitchen. What do you think, guys? I love what you've done with the place. Baloo. Very tasteful. An ambience I can't refuse. Uh, guys, it's a throw pillow and blue walls. Um, if you don't mind, we're trying to wrap up the show. We're over here by Cordy to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Hey, you know, a throw pillow can really make all the difference. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. This is a very fancy computer. That's pretty fancy. You know what you can do with this? You can go online. You can find more blue walls with a computer. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, Things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. That's right, Larry. When Pistachio did whatever he wanted to do and didn't listen to Gelato, he ended up in big trouble. But then he learned that Gelato was older and wiser, and that he loved him and wanted what was best for him. Just like my mom and dad. They love me and want what's best for me. That's why I should listen to them. You got it, Liam. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> Let it all out, big guy. <laughs> Let it all like out. That. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> Always remember, God made you special. Uh, and he loves you very much. <laughs> Bye! Bye. Oh, I love that pillow. What? This is a fancy place. Hi, kids. Larry the Cucumber here. What do you think of this one? Hey, better, better. Hey, better, better. Cool? Hmm. Howdy, folks. 
Home on the range. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven score in 14 years ago. Oh, it's no use. Nothing's working. I look terrible. Hey, Larry. What you doing? Oh, hi, Petunia. Bob's getting the next show ready, and I'm just trying to find my look. Your look? Yeah, my look. Look. See? I can't find my look. Unless you count looking goofy as a look. What? Oh, you don't look goofy. You look like you in a fedora. <laughs> you look nice. <laughs> Besides, hats. I love hats. Nice hat. You think? Nope. Not working. At least this covers my face. Greetings, ladies. Hi, QWERTY. Wow, you can talk? I love your new voice chip, QWERTY. Ah, uh, it's nothing, really. Just something I picked up with my latest operating system. You like it? Oh, yes. It's very sophisticated. You're just saying that. QWERTY, do you have a message for us? Affirmative. Lauren Thomas of Garden Grove, California. Hi, Petunia. Hi, Annie. Hi, Hi Lauren. Lauren. Hi, Larry. Hi, Lauren. Can you guys help me with my question? We'll sure try. Well, it's just that I got these braces and I have glasses and sometimes I don't feel very good about myself. Can you guys help me? You know, Lauren, I think we may have a couple of stories that may help both you and Larry. You need help too, Larry? Boy, do I ever. What do you think about this one, Lauren? Do you have a beret? You see? Okay, I think Bob has those stories ready now. Roll film. Wow, that was great. Okay, I know those were totally princess stories, but I think I get the picture. Anyone can learn a thing or two from a princess story, Larry. Snooterella learned that she was beautiful because the king, her creator, made her that way. And that's how he saw her. And Queen Blueberry in Sweet Pea Beauty learned that to be the queen God wanted her to be, she needed to stop worrying so much about what she looked like on the outside and concentrate on being kind and wise on the inside. What do you say we find out if Cordy has a verse for us today? Sure! sure. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I don't know why Bob doesn't like this song. It's catchy. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7 b. So, I shouldn't worry so much about how I look on the outside. Whether I wear the cowboy hat, or the baseball hat, or my paper sack that changes expressions. <gasps> Whoa, how's it do that? What matters is what's on the inside. That's what God sees. That's right, Larry. And I'm beautiful just the way God made me. That's right, Lauren, you sure are. By the way, I love your grill. Thanks, Larry. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. That's right. Today we have... Uh... What are you waiting for, Bob? Well, I, uh... I was waiting for someone to interrupt me. Why would anyone want to interrupt you? Well, it's just that usually I try to start the show and, and then I get interrupted by someone who messes everything up. No. And suddenly all my plans go to waste and we end up doing some wacky thing like Western Bible stories. Who would do such a thing? So this time I didn't plan anything. So, uh... Well, don't you have a broken aardvark behind your back or a letter other than the one we're supposed to be answering? Are you saying I'm the one who interrupts you? Well, it's been kind of a pattern. Bob, I had no idea. I thought this was our show. Well, it is, but I feel like... I never realized how you felt. I'm not upset. I just think... 
Okay, then. Since you don't like what I have to say, I just won't speak. Uh, now, Larry. Mm. Larry, really now? Mm -mm. Larry, please? Mm. <sighs> well, QWERTY, I guess it's just you and me this time. Very funny. Uh, would you please just bring up today's question? Today's question comes from Maggie Greenman in Centennial, Texas. Greetings, Maggie. Thanks, Curry. Hi, Bob. Hi, Larry. Hi there, Hi, Maggie. Maggie. What's your question, Maggie? I tried out for the cheerleading team at school. I worked really hard, but I didn't get picked. Hmm. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I don't understand why I didn't get chosen, but my friend Savannah did. And now she acts all like she's really special. And that makes me feel, well, not very important. What should I do? Wow, Maggie, that's a great question. <laughs> and now I wish I'd prepared better. Mm, mm. <gasps> you have an idea, Larry? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. I think he said roll film. Mm -hmm. I feel like I always say this, but wow, Larry, that was great. Thanks, Bob. Glad to see you got your voice back. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I said that you always mess up my plans. Oh, uh, I forgive you. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies if you are wise, but you are wise today, and God has got a lot to say, it's in his book. Wow. Well, you see, we know God's word is for us, every one of us on this, and we've had a funny counter burn, let's go and take a look. Catchy little jingle. Hey, <laughs> hey. Stuart wished that his life had turned out different. He thought if he had only caught that football, his life would have been better. But Stuart learned that God had a plan for him that was more important than winning a football game. Stuart realized that everything in his life was meaningful because God was always working in his life, even when he didn't see it. So even though I'm sad that I don't get to be a cheerleader, I should have hope because God loves me and has a plan for me? Exactly, Maggie. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. You know I do. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Love you, QWERTY. Back at ya, Maggie. Aren't you glad it was God's plan for me to be here making veggie tales with you, Bob? Huh? Boy, am I. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Remember, God made you special. He loves you very much. And he has got a plan for your life. Bye! Bye. Oh, found another one. Oh, and another. Uh, Larry, slow down. Save some for me. Come on, Bob. Gotta keep up. I'm looking for the golden egg. I can't let you find it first. Well, I'm not as good as you at finding Easter eggs. Oh! Sorry. It was right there. Oh, man! Woohoo! I am an egg-finding genius. Uh, please, Larry, could you at least give me a little help? But if I do that, how am I going to find the... <gasps> golden egg? Congratulations. Oh, Bob, I just love Easter. Springtime, baskets, chocolate, golden eggs. What do you suppose is in here? A giant cream-filled chocolate bunny? Please tell me it's a giant cream-filled chocolate bunny. Couldn't tell ya. Happy Easter, Bob and Larry. Oh, well, hi. What's your name? My name is Timmy Tucker. I wonder why QWERTY didn't tell us about Timmy. QWERTY's got Sundays off. Oh, right. Well, hi, Timmy. How can we help you? Well, I don't know. I'm just happy you're doing an Easter show. Because I love Easter. There's Easter baskets, chocolate, colored eggs. Golden eggs. I love all that stuff. Do you especially love the giant cream-filled bunnies? Those are great. Are you going to have a bunch of that kind of stuff in the show? Yeah, Bob, are we? You know, those things are fun, but sometimes it can be easy to forget what's really important about Easter. Yeah, Bob, what is really important about Easter? Well, Timmy and Larry, it just so happens that we have a story today that can help to remind us all about something and someone far more important. Oh, that's good. While it's going, can you help me get this egg open? Timmy, if it's a giant cream-filled bunny, I'll split it with you. Roll film! 
That was a real nice story, Bob. Thanks, Larry. And a great reminder of what's most important about Easter. Jesus! That's right. By the way, thanks for helping me get the egg open. You're welcome. I'm bummed out it was empty, though. Well, you shouldn't be. Why not? Because this is an egg that reminds us that Jesus' tomb was empty on that first Easter morning. <gasps> oh, I get it. Well, then I'm not bummed out at all. That's awesome. It sure is. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I never get tired of that song. Me either. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Uh, QWERTY? Oh, remember, Bob? QWERTY's got Sundays off. <gasps> That's right. Uh, hold on a second. So, it turns out the golden egg was empty. No cream-filled bunny. That's okay. I've got plenty of jelly beans. Oh, jelly beans. I love jelly beans. Here we go. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man is Jesus, right, Bob? That's right, Larry. Jesus came to serve us, even giving his life for us. And rising again on Easter. So, Timmy, does this help to remind you what's really important about Easter? Yes, remembering what Jesus did for us and trying to be like him. You got it, buddy. But we're still cool with the chocolate bunnies, eggs, and jelly bean thing, though, right? Absolutely. Oh, good. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. <laughs> what did you do? Don't worry, Bob. This paint is specially formulated for tile. Actually, now I'm more worried. Why did you paint the tile green? Well, two reasons. Reason number one, green is my favorite color. Reason number two, the tile is always greener on the other side of the fence. That's grass. Work with me, Bob. Grass don't grow in the kitchen. Grass doesn't grow in the kitchen. Yep, and that's why I use paint. Paint? Grass? AstroTurf? I'm confused. Well... I was just talking with Madison before the show. Madison? Yeah, over here. Madison Scott from Ogallala, Nebraska. Dear Bob and Larry, my friend Taylor has everything. It isn't fair. Why can't I have what she has? Your friend Madison. That's a good question. It sure is. We have a... Okay, Madison. Imagine you're Bob and I'm your friend Taylor. You're over there on the yellow tile, but you're thinking, wow, that green tile is awesome. I want to go over there like Larry, who's really Taylor, but you can't because there's a fence, but no gate. And because your mom bought you new white pants and you might mess them up. You see the problem, Addison? What? Shh, I'm using an anomaly. She'll figure it out. You mean analogy, and nobody's going to figure that out. Really? When you say the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, you're saying you'd rather have something different from what you already have. That's what I said. <sighs> I'll tell you what. I have the perfect story for Madison that might just answer her question. While she watches, I'll help you mop up the countertop before the paint dries. Did I mention it was formulated for instant drying? Oh, man. Roll film! So there you go, Madison. The tile isn't really greener on the other side of the fence. That's right. Especially when you take down the fence and repaint the tile. Is that another anomaly? I'm pretty sure it is. Thanks for helping me clean up the kitchen, Bob. I really didn't think about the implications. You mean that painting the tile with specially formulated fast-drying tile paint would be hard to wipe up? Those implications? Yeah, those ones. Well, that's okay, Larry. The point you were trying to make is an important one. It's not good to compare yourself to others and to want what they have. The grass, or tile, isn't any greener on the other side of the fence. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. 
And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. You missed a spot. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Jeremiah 15a. Before I formed you in your mother's body, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart to serve me. In our story, we learned that God made Princess to be Princess. And he made Vanna to be Vanna. God made each of us special. He knew us and had a plan for our lives before we were even born. Sometimes it's hard to see God's plan for our lives, but we need to trust him that his plan is the best plan. That's right, Larry. So, Madison, you can be happy for Taylor about all the great things she has, and at the same time, be thankful about the person God has made you and the plan he has for you. And I bet you'll see the grass is the greenest right there on your side of the fence. Ooh, nice. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Larry. I'm getting the hang of this anomaly thing. Yep. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. I'm Bob the Tomato, and Larry should be here by now. Oh, Larry, where are you? I'm still trying to get my costume on. What, a hat? Your costume is right here. All you have to do is put it on your head. Well, I had this really cool idea. Since we're doing a show about lending a helping hand, I decided it would be good to have hands. I don't know what to say. Hey, buddy. How's it going? It's surprising. We've gone without hands for all these years. I feel like I've been missing out. Look, never been able to do this before. Hello? Larry, that suit looks ridiculous. How do you move in that thing? Easy. This thing handles like a dream. I feel so handsome. You don't actually need hands. Lending a helping hand is just a figure of speech. It means doing what you can to help others, like in the stories of Huckleberry Larry and Lyle the Kindly Viking. Oh, I love those stories. Are we going to watch those? Yep. Uh, as soon as you put on your Huckleberry Larry hat. Um, can you give me a hand? <sighs> Roll film! Oh, I love those stories. Helping and sharing is awesome. Yep. Thanks for helping me get my hat on, Bob. You're welcome. I'm always willing to lend a helping hand. That's good to know. Listen, if you ever need me to lend you a hand, just let me know. I'll give you a hand. Oh, in fact, there. You can have that one. Thanks. I appreciate that. In Huckleberry Larry, I learned that whenever we have the chance to help someone, we should. That's right. And in Lyle the Kindly Viking, we learned that sharing is a great way to help. And when we help and share, we get our share of friends. You know, Bob, in Hebrews 13, 16, it says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Did you write that on your hand? Yep. That's another thing hands are good for. When we do good and share, we're helping, right, Bob? Absolutely. Well put, Larry. Thanks. That's all the time we have for today, kids. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Whoops. All hands on deck. Oh, brother. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Larry the Cucumber. When a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Larry, what are you doing? Oh, hi, Bob. I'm conducting a philosophical experiment. I didn't realize you could do that. Oh, yeah. 
Since today's show is about listening, I thought it would be good to provide a visual aid. That's a good idea. Uh, but how's this gonna help? Well, we'll need to listen closely to see if we can hear the tree falling. But if we're not around, how are we gonna hear it? What do you mean? We're right here. Uh, yes, Larry, but your question was, if no one is around, will it make a sound? Well, if we're not around, how are we supposed to hear it? Exactly. What? Great job, Larry. You answered the question. You've got to be there to hear it. But we haven't finished the experiment. Give me a hand with this saw. I don't know if this is such a good idea. This is a really big tree. We can't let that stand in the way of philosophy. Now I'm confused again. Uh, last week I answered the question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? How'd you do that? By dropping a chicken and an egg off a ladder at the same time. It was a tie. The chicken made more sound, though. Roll film! Those are some great stories about listening. They sure were. I'm sad my experiment didn't work out, though. I've been sawing for almost an hour, and I can't get through this tree. Well, it is a big tree. I think it would have made a big sound, though, whether we were here to listen to it or not. I guess we'll never know. In Pistachio, we learned how important it is to listen to our parents. They're older and wiser and love us very much. And they want what's best for us. That's right. And in Josh and the Big Wall, we learned how important it is to listen to God. For many of the same reasons. God loves us and wants what's best for us. And he's much, much wiser. His way is the best way. Oh, Bob, look. I've answered another important philosophical question. What's that? Why did the chicken cross the road? Um... To give me this piece of paper. Thanks, Lucy. <laughs> Proverbs 1.5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. Well, that's... that's great. But how did the chicken know what Bible verse to bring out? An age-old question, Bob. An age-old question. <laughs> I know! Sorry about dropping you off the ladder. Chickens can't fly. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I knew that. So anyway, the Bible tells us it's important to listen so we can learn and know what to do. Wow, Larry, I'm proud of you. I was a little worried about your experiment, but everything worked out just great. Um, well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Oh, Larry! Always remember, God made you special, and he loved you very... ...much. I've got a question for you. If a cucumber destroys the kitchen, how long does it take to rebuild? An age-old question, Bob. An age-old question. Bye! Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. Always remember, God made you special. Uh, Larry, the show is just starting. No, you say, and he loves you very much. Well, yeah, but that's what we say at the end of the show. But for a show that's named God Loves You Very Much, you say it at the beginning. Wait, we're doing a remake of the old movie Painting in the Rain. What? Why would you think that? Well, you're dressed for painting, and I'm dressed for rain. Actually, I was going to ask you why you were dressed in a raincoat. For the big opening number. We're painting in the rain. We're painting in the rain. Our colors are running, but we're not gonna complain. That's nice, Bob, but this is God Loves You Very Much. Well, then, where did this come from? I'm telling you, it needs to be a tap dance. The audience cannot get enough of the tap dance. What difference will a tap dance make? No one paints in the rain anymore. The colors run. Why not have him paint on a train? Here, try this. We're painting on a train. We're painting on a train. The ride is so bumpy. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. No, 
People read on train. They do not paint. What if he tap danced while he painted on the train? He will get motion sick. What's going on here? Creative development. We are writing the script for the next show. You see, Bob? This show is God Loves You Very Much. I'll paint a picture of how I feel about God's love while we show classic VeggieTales stories of God's love for us. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. But what am I supposed to do? Come with us, Tomato. We need to find you some tap shoes. Would you prefer to paint in the rain or on a train? Uh, the rain is much better. But kids love trains. How can you paint with the landscape rushing How can you paint with watery things? Watercolors, hello. Um, Larry? We have a question. Does God love me? Does he love me? We hope you let us know. Is the answer just because? Do you really think he does? Like you tell us every show. Does God love me? Why would that be? Does he love us every day? If it's sunny, I suppose. What if it rains or if it snows? Does he love us anyway? <coughs> when the sun is out shining brightly, when the sky is so blue it sings, the warmth on our cheeks so easily speaks to the joy and the love that he brings. Sometimes life can be cold and cloudy, and the sky can be dark and gray. But his love stays the same in the sun or the rain. God loves us as much every day. God's love is the same every day. But how do we know? How do we know? The Bible tells us so. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Isaiah 54, 10a. Wow! God loves us in good times and in bad. Thanks, Larry. You're welcome. Uh, Larry? We have a question. Does God love me? Does he love me? We hope you'll let us know. Is the answer just because? Do you really think he does? Like you tell us every show. Does God love me? Why would that be? Does he love us when we're bad? When I dirty up my clothes? Or forget to blow my nose? Or don't listen to our dads? <laughs> It's great when we do the right thing. It's good when we do our best. It's pure and it's right to be kind and polite. But our hearts are what God requests. Sometimes we can be proud and naughty. We sin and we don't obey. But his love stays the same in the joy or the pain. God loves us as much anyway. God loves us as much anyway. But how do we know? How do we know? The Bible tells us so. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. So God loves us just for who we are, not what we do. Thanks, Larry. You bet. Uh, Larry, I have a quick question. When the sun is out shining brightly, when the sky is so blue it sings, the warmth of our cheeks so easily speaks to the joy and the love that he um, brings. Larry, I was just gonna ask. It's great when we do the right thing. It's good when we do our best. It's pure and it's right to be kind and polite, but our hearts are what God requests. Um, could you? Sometimes life can be cold and cloudy, cloudy and the sky and can be dark and, and gray. gray. But his love stays the same in the sun or the rain. God loves us as much every day. But his love stays the same in the sun or the rain. God loves us as much every day. His love stays the same in the sun or the rain. God loves us as much every day. God loves us very, very much. Very much. Well, that. Super! Uh, but Larry, I was just gonna ask you if you've seen my rubber rain boots. Oh. In the hall closet. God loves you very much! Wow, Larry, that's a nice painting. Thanks, Bob. God's love makes me happy. 
And that's one happy painting. I can't decide if yellow or orange is happier. Huh. If I had to choose one, I'd say yellow. Yeah, me too. And those were some great stories. Yep. Little Joe taught us that no matter our circumstances, we know that God loves us and has a plan for our lives. In Gideon, we learned that because God loves us so much, we can trust him. And finally, in Rack Shack and Benny, we learned that God loves us and is always with us. That's a whole lot of love. It sure is. So, did you figure out the next show? Is it going to be painting in the rain or on a train? Neither. We changed direction. We can't get traction on painting and singing. In the rain or planes. You know what kids love now? Ah. Uh... Science fiction. Planet of the Grapes. Oh, my. Get your hands off me, you sweet, sticky grape. That line is gold, Philippe. Gold. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Always remember, God made you special. And, and he, he loves, loves you very much. much. Bye! Bye! You know, I was kind of liking painting in the rain. I'd vote for that. Clearly, you do not recognize genius. Mais oui! Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. <laughs> and I'm Larry the Cucumber. Ouch. Larry, you don't have to do this now. Maybe you should go lie down. That's okay, Bob. I need to do this. For Squeaky. <laughs> kids, if you see this hamster, could you tell him I really miss him? That he's the best hamster a cucumber could ever have, and that if he comes back, I'll give him all the low-fat cottage cheese he wants. <laughs> low-fat cottage cheese is his favorite. Uh, oh. Tell him I didn't mean to leave the lid off the cage. I just forgot. Tell him he has fresh sawdust waiting for him when he comes home. <laughs> Come home, Squeaky. Come home. It's okay, buddy. Greetings, Bob. Greetings, sad Larry. Oh, hi, Quirty. What do you have for us today? Eddie Espinosa from Boone, North Carolina. Hey, Bob and Larry. Hi, Eddie. Hey there, Eddie. Larry, what happened? Well, I lost my hamster and fell off the countertop. It's been a really bad day. Really? I'm having a bad day, too. I just moved to a new school, and I don't have any friends. Oh, you feel kind of lonely, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I need a hamster. If you see Squeaky, he's a really good friend. Cherish him. Well, uh, Eddie and Larry, I think I have a couple of stories that can help both of you. You know, sometimes it's good to be reminded of, of where God is when we're hurting. First, let me read you the story of Lenny and the Lost Birthday. Well, what'd you think? I think I'm the happiest cucumber in the world. Squeaky came home, Bob. Squeaky came home. Well, that's great. Those are some really nice stories, don't you think, Eddie? Oh, yeah. You okay, Larry? You're still moving pretty slow. Oh, I'll be fine, Bob. I'm just so happy Squeaky came home. It's like I learned in Lenny and the Lost Birthday. Sometimes, you can feel like you're having a really bad day and nothing's going right. Like people forgetting your birthday or, or losing your hamster? Yep. In times like that, it helps to remember how much God loves us and how special we are to him. And because of that, we can have hope that things will get better. That's right. And in the story of Robin Good and his not-so-merry men, we learned that there's no hurt too big for God. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Don't worry, Bob. Things will get better. <gasps> hey. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. See? All better. Psalm 55:22. Give your burdens to the Lord, for he will take care of you. That's right. When you're hurting, give it to God. Let him help you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Sure. You bet. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember... Squeaky, where are you going? Get back in your cage. Squeaky, Squeaky, come back. Larry, watch for the... <laughs> 
Oh, never mind. Ow. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Good evening. I'm Larry the Cucumber. The first. Welcome. Ah, the classics. They are so very classy. When you combine British accents with a lot of walnut and just the right amount of cobblestone, you've got something special. You've got a classic. What? What are you doing? I I'm being fancy. Why? Because of today's story. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Oh, that's a great story. It's a classic. Exactly. A classic. Well, it's great to read the classics, uh, but why... Shoot them up, boys! Oh, hey, where you at? That tickles! What? What are you... Voila, voila, Washington! Woohoo! Hey. Why am I dressed like a baker? I received this correspondence from Agatha Williamson, Bristol, England. Wow, fancy. Dear Bob and Larry, I do hope this letter finds you well. I'm quite fond of your program. Look at that, see? She spelled program with an E. Isn't that cute? In Sunday school, I learned I should always love others, but there are times when I find that exceedingly difficult. What about when people are boorish and incorrigible? Look at there, boorish and incorrigible. Isn't that cute? Um, what's that mean? It means not nice. Oh, okay, that makes sense. With gratitude, Agatha Williamson, Bristol, England. Wow, that's a great question. It sure is. So, Agatha and Bob, I think I've got just the thing. My own classic titled, The Penniless Princess. We hope you enjoy. Stop talking like that. Shh. Wow, Larry, that was wonderful. A classic. Great job, buddy. Thanks, Bob. You know, you make a really great baker. You think? Well, I did enjoy baking those biscuits. I hear they were delicious. Croissant? Can you bake the croissant? Uh, I don't know. I suppose I could try. The chocolate eclair? Oh, I love the chocolate eclair! <laughs> well, maybe, but, but oh, oh, I... What about English muffins? Oh. No, 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 no. Croissant, croissant, croissant! Hold on, guys. We gotta wrap up the show. Fine. It's time to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Wrap it up like a croissant! <sighs> you see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Romans 8.39 No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow! Nothing can separate us from God's love. Yep. God loves us, no matter what. And that means we can love others, no matter what. In our story, we saw that Sarah knew how much she was loved. And because she knew she was God's little princess, she could be kind and loving to everyone around her, no matter what. So, Agatha Williamson from Bristol, England, remember, you're also a daughter of the king, God's little princess. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato, and welcome to Veggie Tales. Uh, your turn to say your name. <gasps> Wait, hold on a sec. I just remembered something better. Something better? Yep, something better. And bigger. Gib? Come around to this side. Ah, uh, big? Yep, big. Real big. It certainly is. Uh, but Larry, why the big, big? Well, Junior and I have been talking. Yep. Junior. Hi, Bob. How'd you get all the way up there? No big deal. Actually, it was kind of a big deal, because this is big! Yep, Junior and I were talking about all the big shows we've done over the years where little guys... That's me! ...have done big things. They're big, I'm little. My head only comes to their middle. But I say little guys can do big things, too. Giant Goliath. 
idiots and big bruisers with large muscles and huge choosers. Huge choosers? They're both big, but little guys can do big things. With God's help, little guys can do big things too. That's true, Junior and Larry. With God's help, little guys can do big things. Yep, so that's why. May we offer you a seat? May we? Zinema seating. Sign here, please. Enjoy the show. Uh, what show? Wow. Gotta go big if you're gonna go big. Come on, you gonna watch? This is a lot of popcorn. Yeah, we got the big size. Aw, uh, that was wonderful. Oh, that's a lot of popcorn. I can't believe you ate the rest of our popcorn. Leave no popcorn behind. Uh... Cucumber's motto, excuse me. Who will I fight? Goliath! Junior! Long time no see! How you been? I've been big. Is the seat taken? Ah! Uh, ah! Mmm, tight. Thanks for coming to our big show. Thank you for inviting me. Popcorn? Duty calls. Big Vikings! Rob and Pillage! And don't share with others in their village. Find out the little guys can do big things too. Little guys can do big things too. Overflow seating. Enjoy this show. How did that whale get in here? That's one big, big. Be sure to keep him wet, guys. We are trying to eat it I've got a really big tummy ache. Well, Junior, I have to say, you really did put on a big show. Why, thank you, Bob. That's big of you to say. Big, big. God's bigger. And when I think of him, that's why I figure. With his help, little guys can do big things. With his help, I know I can do big things. With God's help, little guys can do big things, too. God made you big, or if he made you little, he made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to Veggie Tales. Ahem, pardon me, gentlemen. Might I have a moment? Archibald. I mean, Alfred. Greetings, Master Larry. Uh, hello, Bob. Uh, hello. What's up, Alfred? I've received a quite distressing message from Sean Smith of Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, dear Larry boy, I'm afraid to be in my room alone at night. I'm afraid of thunderstorms, bugs, and dogs. I'm also afraid of snakes. Ooh, snakes. Yeah, they're creepy. What can I do when I feel afraid? Your friend, Sean. Huh. Poor kid. Uh, that's a lot to be afraid of. Uh, Larry, where are you going? This is a job for Larry Boy. I need a phone booth. Huh? Why a phone booth? Superheroes change into their super suits in phone booths. Well, Larry, there are no phone booths anymore. Uh, here, you can change behind my cell phone. Very funny. Where am I supposed to change? I don't know. Maybe your dressing room? <gasps> Good idea. He'll need some assistance. This is a job too big for Larry Boy alone. Uh, what do you mean? Check your dressing room. My dressing room? Oh, okay. Sean Smith, we give you the League of Incredible Vegetables and the Flurry of Fear. Roll film. <sighs> a job well done. <laughs> I feel super. You look super. You know, I've been missing out all these years. Missing out? Well, you've been Larry Boy for so long, getting to dress up and battle villains. <laughs> there really is something to this superhero thing. Woohoo! Ah, 
That's awesome. It sure is. I wonder if you he... want to wrestle. Do I want to what? Wrestle. You want to wrestle? I could take you. You could take me? Yeah. I know you're taller, but I have a low center of gravity. What are you doing? We can't wrestle with you running away. I don't want to wrestle. Oh, What's going on? Make him stop. <laughs> Superhero syndrome, SHS. I should have warned you. Superhero syndrome? Yes. It can be quite energizing to play a superhero for the first time. It can take a while to get back to normal. Oh, yeah. I remember. I won the dance a after the fib from outer space. Oh, uh, yeah. Dancing could be fun. It's time to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I love that song! Really? You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Ha! That's great! When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalm 56.3. So, Sean, whenever you feel afraid, you can put your trust in God. And when you realize that God is bigger than anything you can fear, it'll help you to not feel scared. Well done, Master Larry, thingamabob. Such an important lesson for all of us to learn. That's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! I'm going jogging. Uh, Larry, the show is starting. Can you please hurry up? Be <gasps> loved. Let us love one another. Let us love, let us love. Friend, mother, sister, father, other. Let us love one another. You gonna ask me why I'm dressed as lettuce? Let us. Beloved, let us love one another. N not let us. 1 John 4, 7. Oh, but if I were a lettuce, I would still love you, even though you're a tomato. Because I love you, bro. I appreciate that. I love you too, uh, bro. So I was thinking, for this show, Let Us Love One Another, we can show the kids five different ways we can love one another. Oh, okay. Well, I was kind of thinking we could show a few favorite VeggieTales episodes about loving one another. Well, maybe we could do both, because I've been learning how to animate. You know what animation is, right? I believe I'm familiar with the concept. You want to go first? Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> That's a lettuce joke, isn't it? Go ahead. <laughs> uh huh. Good one. Roll film! Beloved, let us love one another. Let us love, let us love. Friend, mother, sister, father, other. Let us love one another. Nice, brother. Thanks, Bob. Those are some of my favorite VeggieTales episodes. Great picks. Thanks, Larry. And nice job on your stories, too. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in this oh. book. You okay? Cumbersome. Cucumbersome. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. 1 John 4, 7. And there are lots of ways we can show love to one another. Helping, forgiving, sharing. Praying for each other, or simply reminding people that you love them by telling them, I love you. Love you too, bro. Because God loves us, he wants us to love others too. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Whoa. Let us get out of this suit.
Uh, Larry, what are you doing? <laughs> Dropping breadcrumbs. Why? To find my way back. From... From Storybook Land. How do I look? Um, delicious? Why are you dressed like a cookie? I got a letter from Allison Carter of Sugarland, Texas. Dear Bob and Larry, I love fairy tales and nursery rhymes. Hansel and Gretel, Humpty Dumpty, the Three Pigs, the Gingerbread Man. Oh, you're the Gingerbread Man. <coughs> oh, hello, Mother. Uh, that's your mom? What? N no, no, this is Mother. Mother Goose. Someone's mother, I guess, but not mine. She can smell a nursery rhyme from a mile away. Hello, Mother. <coughs> Allison wants to know if we can do a nursery rhyme story. I think that's a great idea. Wait, hold on. I got an email from Danny Green of Plattsmouth, Nebraska. You mean Plattsmouth? Near the mouth of the Platt? Yes, uh, of course. Danny's been learning about parables in Sunday school and was wondering if we could tell a parable. What's that? A parable is a story that makes it easier to understand a lesson. Hmm. I got stuck in a rodeo once with the parables. Definitely learned my lesson. Never get in the ring with the parables. Powerful lesson. Uh, uh, Jesus used parables to explain truths about God to ordinary people. Well, we're ordinary people. Exactly, which is why we're going to do a show about parables. <gasps> which is exactly why we're going to do a show for both Allison and Danny. Uh, Allison and Danny? Run with me here, Bob. I just spent three weeks making nursery rhyme costumes for everyone. I don't know, Larry. You got me kind of nervous. Uh, don't worry. Right, Mother Goose? <laughs> Here, have a breadcrumb. Roll film! Stop, that tickles. Great job, Larry. You were right. Those were stories that both Allison and Danny would love. Mother, wait! It's, it's time to talk about what we've learned today. S stop following me! And so what you to lives to God has a lot to say in this book. Oh, oh good. The music seems to calm her down. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that her song is done, we'll take a look. <gasps> Matthew 7, 24 to 27. And Luke 10, 27 to 37. Hmm. Cordy, what do those verses say? Well, Larry, those verses are for two different parables of Jesus. The parable of the wise and foolish builders and the parable of the good Samaritan. Yeah! Uh, hey, those parables are like the stories in our nursery rhymes. Uh, duck. That's right. Like the builder parable, our stories show that anyone who hears God's words and puts them into practice is like the man who builds his house on a firm foundation. Duck. And like the parable of the Good Samaritan, our Humpty Dumpty story showed that we should love our neighbors as ourselves, not forgetting that everyone is our neighbor. Woo, duck. Woo. Exactly. Well, goose! Ah! Start the music! Start the music! What music? The What We Have Learned song. It calms her down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not crazy about that song. I'm being eaten by a goose! Well, uh, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he made me tasty. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Aye, that's it, bud. All right, now let's hear a bit of the melody. Oh, that's lovely. Takes me back to the rolling hills of my youth. Uh, hey guys, what's up? Hi, Bob. Greetings, Tomato. Scooter's teaching me how to play the bagpipes. It's like an instrument, only squishier. I squish harder. Oh, lovely. Larry, we have to start the show. Way ahead of you, Bob. Did you see the message from Scott Mitchell? Aye, is he Scottish? Probably. His name's Scott. This came a little while ago. Dear Bob and Larry, I like to play the piano, and my friends Justin and Sam like to play soccer. I'm not very good at soccer, and sometimes they tease me about it. Can you help me? Scott Mitchell. I think it's great that you like to play the piano. I like to play the bagpipes. We all have different talents and abilities, but we can all get along. Wow, Scooter, that's nice. 
I was actually thinking the same thing. In fact, I have a story... About a Scottish cucumber! Uh, Scottish cucumber? I'm with you. Tighten your kilt belts, boys. I've got a noble tale to tell. What kilt belt? I give you McLarry and the Stinky Cheese Battle. Roll film. That was lovely, McLarry the Cucumber. You've outdone yourself. Aw, oh, thanks, Scooter. And Mac Bob. Mac Bob! A fine name and a fine Scott you turned out to be. Uh, I appreciate that. You know what? We've got to get you suited up as well. Bring in a set of pipes for the tomato. Oh, that's that's quite all right. Tomato-sized guilt. Uh, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Look at us. It warms my heart. Brothers of the Highlands, we mates forever we shall be. Join in. Brothers of the Highlands, we mates forever we shall be. Oh, I felt a chill run up me vertebra. What a great story, Scooter. Differences are good. Yep. Even though Mac Larry had other talents from the rest of the Barbarians, he was able to use his gifts to help end the stinky cheese battle. When we realize that we're all special and we all have something to give... We can all get along! Well put, brother. Aye, brother. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. And so what we have Who needs a disembodied group of acapellans when we've got everything we need right here? And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. Sorry. And we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Excuse me. That's better. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Romans 12, 4 through 6a. So, Scott, just because you might be different, have different talents or abilities, you can feel good knowing we're all part of God's family. And our differences shouldn't divide us, but bring us together. Oh, Scotty boy, oh, Scott, oh, Scott, oh, Scotty. Help me out here, I'm making this up. Oh, oh, okay, you've got a lot to give. That's what you've got, a lot. Oh, Scott. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much, oh, Scotty. Bye! Bank pipe solo! Hello, boys and girls. We've got a very special show planned for you today. I'm Larry the Cucumber. <laughs> Larry! Ouch. Wow, did you do all this? Yep, elves are good at decorating. You're the elf? Mm -hmm. Well, I brought some lights. You always need more lights. Larry, the camera's on. Yep, say hello to the boys and girls. The boys and girls? I didn't know we were doing a show today. Well, we weren't, but then I thought, wouldn't it be great as a Christmas present to the kids to tell the boys and girls a Christmas story. Oh, that's a great idea. Let's do a Christmas carol. I'd love to play the tomato of Christmas present. Nope, not that one. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Ouch. Have you found the lights? Wow, who called in the elf brigade? You're looking at them. Why were you on the floor? Elves are a little better at decorating than balancing. We're doing a show? A Christmas show. How about the Nutcracker? I could do battle with the Mouse King. Nope. Not the Nutcracker. Bob! Mr. Oh, Lund! Oh, oh. Ow! Oops! Sorry. That's okay. I'm used to it. Uh, no one told me we were doing a show. Larry says we're doing a Christmas show. <gasps> Wonderful! I've always wanted to do the Gift of the Magi. It's a very inward piece, but I'm sure I'd be brilliant at it. Nope. Not the Gift of the Magi. <laughs> then what story are we doing, Larry? The one where I'm an elf. And Mr. Lunt works for Bob, who's the owner of a lighting business who's hired to decorate a mall owned by the king of the mall, played by Archibald here. 
Wait, I work for him? The king of the mall. I like the sound of that. Where's my scepter? Wow, Larry, this looks nice. You're a great Christmas decorator. Thanks, Bob. But there's a lot more to Christmas than just decorations. Like helping and giving. That smells like a segue. I hope you like your present, kids. Merry Christmas. This is Major Larry to ground control. Three hours since I lost sight of spaceship. Energy, running low, hungry, cold. Really, really have to go to the bathroom. Ground control, hello? Ground control, thank goodness. Uh, Larry, what are you doing? Drifting aimlessly through space. Uh, you're on the countertop. That's a relief. The countertop's a lot closer to the bathroom. Well, please get down here. We have to start the show. Bob, I can't. I'm stuck. Hey, Jimmy. I'm starving. Can you share some food from your picnic basket with me? Sorry, Larry. No can do. This food is for Jerry and me. We're having a picnic. Yeah, picnic, Jerry. I'm really cold. Can you at least share one of your blankets with me? Sorry. Time for the picnic. But... Mr. Nezzer, can you share your branch trimmer with me and cut the ropes? Nope, sorry. Gotta trim some branches. Oh, oh Mr. Lint, can you share your stilts? Sorry, late for my act. Oh, come on. You know, this reminds me of a message we got from Carly Gordon in Chicago, Illinois. Dear Bob and Larry, I have two teddy bears, Banjo and Patches. My little sister always wants to play with Patches. The thing is, both my bears are really special to me. What should I do? Your friend, Carly. I know what she should do. Hold on, Larry. We're getting there. Carly, we have a story for you today that I think will help answer your question. Is it a short story? I'm kind of in a hurry here. It's regular sized. Oh, great. Okay, Carly. We hope you enjoy... Veggies in Space, the Fennel Frontier. I love that. Sharing is a wonderful thing. Yeah, sharing. If only there was a way we could take what we've learned and somehow apply it to our everyday lives. I hear you. I would love that. <laughs> um, hey guys, I have a thought. Wait a minute, I know. Maybe we could share some of our stuff with Larry to help him get down. Oh, that's I a like thought. that yeah, idea. I like I'll it. Go get I'll my go get my paper. Right? Like and it. my stew. Wow, those guys catch on fast, huh? Yep. I suppose now would be a good time to see if Cordy has a verse for us. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I still really have to go you to the... See, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food to do likewise. Luke 3.11. That's pretty cool how the Bible talks about starship engines. Actually, Larry, tunics are shirts. The Bible tells us that when we have something someone else needs, like extra food or clothing, that we should share. Like Captain Cuke and Mr. Spork, sharing their extra engine with Luntar, to help him and his planet. Exactly. Okay, back to share my food. My blankets. My branch trimmer. My stilts. Uh, Jerry, hand me one of your blankets. Oh, wow, thanks. Here, take half my sandwich. Mm. Thanks for sharing, guys. So, Carly, I think the next time your little sister asks to play with Patches, you should share him with her. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Sorry to leave you hanging like that. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, kids, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Houston, I need a bathroom. Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry. The guy who ate my pie! No, it's just... The cucumber. What's wrong, Jimmy? What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. Jerry, bring in Exhibit A. That's what's wrong. Oops. The three of us made this together. Yeah, together. I was super hungry. We were supposed to split it three ways. You ate all the pie and didn't include us. Did you ever stop to think that Jerry and I might be super hungry too? Yeah, super. And that we might be looking forward to enjoying our pie? Yeah, our pie. I'm sorry, guys. You can't put whipped cream on sorry, buster.
was there an Exhibit B? Uh, usually when there's an Exhibit A, there's an Exhibit B. I was thinking the pie was Exhibit B. Wasn't that Exhibit A? No, the pie tin's Exhibit A. The pie itself is Exhibit B. Which we can't really get to right now because it's in my stomach. Oh, that hurts! Like a pie in the face! Ouch! No, wait, I wasn't... Guys, I'm super sorry. Uh, pretty sure pies to the face don't hurt. This reminds me of a message we got from Jason, way up in Bangor, Maine. Dear Bob and Larry, my little brother is super annoying. He rode my bike without asking, and it got a flat tire. Now I can't ride it. I'm really mad at him. What should I do? Your friend, Jason. Hey, Jimmy. Well, Jason and Jimmy and Jerry and Larry, I think I've got a story that can help. Really? What's it about? It's about friendship and forgiveness. I was hoping it would be about pie. Roll film! That was a super groovy story, Bob. Out of sight! Dynamite! Looks like you guys enjoyed the show. Copy that, Papa Bear! Slap me some skin! Does that mean you like the story? And we learned an important lesson. Oh, yeah? What's that? The 70s were far out, man! Boom, show! And so That's not really the lesson I had in mind. And Larry, my brother, I know you didn't mean to lay a bummer on our summer. I forgive you for eating our pie. Yeah, me too. Dig it? Yeah, I dig it. Thanks, guys. I'm really sorry for eating the pie. By the way, I got you guys another pie. It's back in the green room. What do you say we go veg out in the green room, bro? Later. Sounds like Cordy's got a verse for us. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Because God has forgiven us for the wrong things we have done, we can forgive others. In our story, both Junior and Lanny messed up, but their friends Laura and Dennis learned that rather than not forgiving and not having a friend, that they could forgive and be friends again. So Jason, your little brother might mess up and get on your nerves sometimes, but the best thing you can do is to forgive him. That's right. What are you doing? Being forgiven makes me want to dance. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special and groovy. And he loves you very much. Bye! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. Enough with the chit-chat. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, but, Larry, I was just <laughs> about to... No time, Bob. We got a letter. A handwritten letter. A letter? We usually just get emails. It's urgent. Look. Oh, crayon. This is serious. Dear Bob and Larry, there's a new girl at my school named Mary. She can be a little cranky and rude. It makes me want to be mean right back to her. What should I do? Your friend, Grace. Wow, that's a great question. And urgent. Wardrobe! What? Grace! We gotta get changed to get ready for the show. Grace, we've got just the story for you. Our veggie version of the classic fairy tale, Beauty and the Beast. Hello. You gotta get cooking. Larry, this is no way to introduce a show. Sure it is, Bob. Introducing Beauty and the Beat. That was a very nice story, Larry. And it seems Mirabelle made quite an impact. Yep. No matter how others act toward us, God wants us to show love to everyone. Always. You got it, Bob. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. You seem to be okay with this song lately. I really don't mind it if it doesn't see, enter. You know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a Corrupt me. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4.11 We all have faults and do things that can hurt our friends, but the Bible tells us to love each other despite our faults the way God loves us. In our story, 
the beet was a real crank pot. But Mirabel showed love to him because God had shown love to her. And that love, God's love, helped to change the beet's heart. Mirabel and her whole family made a great new friend. <sighs> love tames the savage beet, right, Bob? I guess you could say that. So, Grace, the best thing you can do with Mary when she is acting mean is not to be mean back to her, but to show love to her. Well, kids, always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Before we say goodbye, we've got a special treat for the kids. A treat? Really? Yep, a brand new Christmas song from the Veggie Tones. Hot off the presses, it's really great. A roll film! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to Veggie Tales. Bob, I gotta say, you look nice today. Did you get a haircut? Oh, yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Nice of you to notice. Uh, you look a little different, too. Have you been working out? Yeah, I've been doing some push-ups. Hmm, thought so. You know what, Bob? I think we should just address the elephant in the room. You think so? Yep. Hey, Roger! <coughs> Thanks for coming. Did you bring your friends? <coughs> awesome. He seems nice. I just have one little question. Why in the world did you bring an elephant onto the countertop? Bob, you didn't... Noah? I didn't... Oh, ah, I get it. Noah. We're telling the story of Noah. Yep. I love the story of Noah. It's one of my favorites. Mine too. I thought of it right away when we got this email from Chris from Raton, New Mexico. Um, excuse us, Roger. <laughs> Dear Bob and Larry, my new baby sister just came home from the hospital. The thing is, I prayed for a baby brother. I had big plans for a brother. Now what am I supposed to do? Why would God do this to me? Your friend, Chris. <laughs> Kids. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing here, Larry. Does this have something to do with God's plans? <laughs> I think you're right on track. Thanks, Bob. Plus, I think Chris is really going to love the orange arc, the giant squid, and the really cool dirigible. The what, the who, and the what? The orange arc, the giant squid, and the... Yeah, 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 I heard what you said. But if I recall correctly, none of those things were mentioned in the story of Noah. Well, you know, I imagine what it would have been like for Noah's family. For his wife and kids. And what Shem would have thought of the whole thing as he returned from his honeymoon. Okay, now I'm really confused. Did I mention my imagination is very imaginative? Oh, boy. Don't worry, Bob. This is gonna be great. <coughs> Roll film! You were right, Larry. That was great. See? I told you. And I gotta say, you've got quite the imagination. I'm a talking cucumber. That's true. Well, God did tell Noah to build an ark, and he did keep his promise by saving Noah's family and the animals. It's all right there in Genesis 6 through 9. Check it out, kids. Let's see if Cordy has a verse for us. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Hiya, Roger. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Uh, Larry? Oh, excuse us, Roger. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Psalm 33, 4. That's right, Bob. In our story, Shem learned that just like his dad Noah, he could trust God in his plan. Because when God says he's going to do something, he does it. God's plans are much better than our own. Because he loves us and knows what's best for us. Right, Bob? That's right. So there you go, Chris. I know you really wanted a brother, but God's plan was for you to have a sister. And because God loves you and knows what's best for you, you can trust it's the best plan. And you know what? I'm sure that one day, you'll be really glad you have a sister. You'll see. Absolutely. Uh, Larry? Excuse us, Roger. Seriously, Larry, you gotta get that elephant out of here before he... <gasps> Whoa. Oh, dear. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. Well, sailor, have fun swabbing the deck. Really, Roger? <laughs>